Hi, I'm Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours, and this virtual walking tour is going to take us to four locations. Here in my house in the suburbs of Chicago, Grant Park in the Loop area of Chicago, Arrigo Park in Chicago's Little Italy, and the Fire Museum of Greater Chicago located on the city's southwest side. In this tour, we are going to use some recent events to take us back to September 8, 1925, when a Hollywood artist was invited to Chicago to, let's say, spruce up a once toppled statue of Christopher Columbus. This week, two statues of Christopher Columbus were removed in Chicago. The first is this nine-foot bronze statue of Columbus that has stood in Little Italy's Arrigo Park since 1966. The statue, which you can see being removed in this footage from ABC, was originally displayed in the Italian Pavilion at the Chicago World's Fair, also known as the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition, named after, you guessed it, Christopher Columbus. Here is what that section of Arrigo Park looks like with the statue no longer there. Wire fencing has been installed and someone has tied ribbons in the colors of Italy's flag, red, green, and white, around the railing. The second statue recently removed in Chicago is much larger than the one in Arrigo Park. This 33-foot bronze statue that stood in Grant Park was created to commemorate the city's next World's Fair, the Century of Progress, held in 1933 and 1934. And this footage from ABC shows us its removal. And here is what the space looks like now. Yellow police tape is evident, as are temporary fencing and a policeman presumably keeping watch over the area. Both statues of Christopher Columbus have been the subject of controversy almost since their beginnings, as you can see in this massive front page spread from the Chicago Sunday Tribune in 1901. The headline reads, Ruination Park Proposed for Unpopular Statues. The Columbus statue that Chicago recently removed from Arrigo Park is front and center here. And right above that statue in this article is a third Columbus statue, here called Columbus at Inglewood Fire Station. This statue is the one we will explore today, so let's get its history. Like the recently removed Arrigo Park statue, this one came to us at the 1893 World's Fair. At the entrance of the cold storage building, that's where all of the fair's food was stored and refrigerated, stood this 12-foot copper statue of Christopher Columbus. Now, the cold storage building was considered one of the architectural wonders of the exposition, built to exhibit ice-making machinery. The building was six stories high, constructed of wood, and topped by a huge tower. This statue of Columbus that stood outside was thought to be, quote, one of the building's chief artistic adornments. On July 10, 1893, the cold storage building caught fire. Now, depending on which newspaper you picked up, somewhere between 20,000 to, 20, to 30,000 spectators watched as 20 firemen climbed up 100 feet to that tower to try to put out the blaze. Newspapers report that a small puff of white smoke suddenly broke into sheets of flame. Meanwhile, that statue of Columbus outside the building was interfering with the work of the firemen, so some of those guys lassoed the structure and dragged it to the ground. But it was no use. The firemen were trapped. Except for some ropes, there was no escape. A few men swung free, but 12 firefighters fell within the burning building and died. This was the fair's first tragedy, and at the time, it was the deadliest tragedy for firefighters in Chicago's history. The Great Chicago Fire of 1871, yes, killed nearly 300 people, but none of them were firefighters, the Chicago Tribune reports. Remarkably, the statue of Christopher Columbus that adorned the coal storage building at the World's Fair and now lay in a pile of debris was barely damaged in the fire. A week later, the owner of the statue from Ohio presented it to a Chicago fire chief as, quote, an appropriate monument for the reason that it weathered the flames that consumed the victims. 
Eventually, the once toppled statue of Columbus that had adorned the cold storage building at the 1893 World's Fair was moved to a firehouse at 6345 Wentworth Avenue. In 1925, the firemen who were caring for the statue wanted to spruce it up. To do this, they hired a man named Carlisle Cadle, an artist who was connected in some way with Max Sennett's studio in Hollywood. Now in the silent era, Max Sennett was known as the king of comedy. He created the Keystone Cops and is generally considered the father of American slapstick comedy in film. Sennett's company produced the first American feature-length comedy and more than 100 comedy shorts. In other words, he was a big deal in silent era Hollywood production. So, back to Carlisle Cadle. Here's what we know about him. Number one, his professional background. Cadle was, in some way, associated with Max Sennett Studios as an artist, presumably a set painter. Number two, we know about his hiring process in Chicago. So the battalion chief at the firehouse where this now 30-year-old Christopher Columbus statue stood intercepted Cadle on his way east and asked him to decorate the statue in lifelike colors. Number three, we also know a little about his sense of humor. So in one hand of the Columbus statue rests a globe. Cadle apparently suggested in jest that while updating the statue, they replace that globe with a custard pie, a nod to his relationship with Max Sennett and his slapstick comedies. Number four, we know about his design intents. Cadle intended to paint Columbus's coat a silky black and his lace collar and his hose white. And to ensure, quote, the bloom of youth, the statue's cheeks would be painted pink. Finally, a thick coat of black paint would be applied over Columbus's hair to make him, quote, the envy of every chic in the neighborhood. Since 1925, the firemen who have watched over the statue must have been impressed with Cadle's design and finished product because they seem to have maintained the look for years. Here is the statue today with its silky black coat and hair equally as black, and it still has its white hose and lace collar and rosy cheeks. In 1944, the Chicago Tribune reports that the men at the fire station wash the statue twice a year and paint it once a year. Today, the statue sits inside this museum, the Fire Museum of Greater Chicago, alongside early firefighting equipment, including restored fire trucks, alarms, uniforms, and photographs detailing Chicago's firefighting history. As cities within the United States continue to reevaluate memorials that honor controversial figures, I wonder how many of those bronze and copper statues are associated in one way or another with Hollywood. But we'll have to leave that for another virtual talk or tour. I'm Kelly with Chicago Movie Tours. Don't forget to check out chicagomovietours.com for other ways to engage with us, and I'll see you next time on another virtual walking tour.